So the truth about painting landscapes from photos is that 99% of the time, the photo is not good enough by itself to paint. So in this video, I'm gonna explain how I took this photo and turned it into this painting. I'm gonna explain how and why I changed certain things in the scene. I'm gonna explain how I enhanced certain parts of the scene and how I made things up for the scene. So I took this photo about a year ago and it was in the morning. I really liked the light, like the boats, like the water. And I've always wanted to make a painting out of it. So I decided to do that. But this wasn't how the photo was taken. The photo was actually taken like this. So I needed to crop it. And this is how I cropped it. Now, why did I crop it like this? Well, first off, I like this yellow house here in the background. I think I wanna make that my focal point. So I cropped it with it not being in the center. A rough judgment of the center would be kind of somewhere around here. And I like that it's up there. I also like how these boats, the big overall shape of these boats are leading us to that focal point. And also all of the big shapes in the scene are different. When I blur the photo like this, it makes it easier to figure out and see the big shapes. And the thing I like about these big shapes is that they are all different sizes and different shapes. You know, this whole big shape of the boats is different than this whole big shape of the trees, just different than this shape in the reflection, which is different than these trees and reflections grouped together. This sky up here, even though it's being reflected down into the water, it's still a different sized shape. Now, let me show you an example of a bad composition. I could have cropped it like this, which wouldn't have been that good. You know, we have our house here a little too close to the center. These boats kind of go and stop perfectly halfway down the middle of the painting here. You know, this is too similar to this. You know, these trees are too similar to the size of the boats. You know, this big shape here, it's just not that interesting. It's just that nothing's dynamic here. You know, you never want your shapes to be all similar. It's better to have, you know, like a really big shape and then a small shape. That makes things dynamic. Like coming back to this, we have this big shape of the boats and then right next to it, this smaller shape of the land and the reflection. Big, small. You know, that's a horizontal difference. Uh, a vertical difference example would be the sky. You know, we have a short distance and then a long distance. It's dynamic. So after I've cropped the photo, the next thing I wanna do is a small value sketch in my sketchbook. Now I wanna figure this composition out in just three values, a dark, a midtone, and a light. If I can break down the composition in just these three values and have an interesting composition, I know the foundation of the painting is going to work. Now, the next thing I like to do is to do a very small, quick, no more than 30 minute study. Sometimes I'll do these really small, like four inches by three inches, but for this one, I did it on a six by eight inch panel. And this is actually where I figure a lot of things out and make discoveries about the painting. So it's always good to push complement colors. And I have this yellow building, so I thought it'd be better if I pushed a little more purple in the sky. And I like how these two are working off each other. Similar thing with the boats. I had the boats this bluish purple, and blue's complement is orange, purple's complement is yellow, so I kind of pushed the warmth, the yellow and oranges in these trees a little more. Another big thing I did here was simplify a lot of areas. You know, yeah, there are a bunch of little palm trees and you know, whatever and bushes happening here, and here I just simplified it because that area is not important, and I don't want a bunch of detail here taken away and distracting from my focal point here. Also, keeping this whole area simple is going to set it further in the distance. I'm gonna save my detail for up here in the foreground. Similar thing with these trees. You know, yeah, there's a bunch of branches and holes in the trees and there's a big hole there and different trees and a light post. I know that's not important. And having this be a big simple shape with maybe a little cut back in the trees there is gonna work better for the scene. All right, now, if you have a lot of questions about color mixing and you're not very strong with mixing color, I'm not gonna get a lot into color mixing in this video because I offer the color mixing video for my Foundations of Oil Painting course for free. If you wanna check that out, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Now, another huge thing that I did was I figured out the overall structure of these boats in terms of color and value. What I mean is that when I looked at these boats, I figured that the kind of base color is this purplish bluish color. And then any parts of the boat that are flat and facing up towards the sky are gonna be catching that reflected light from the sky. So it's gonna be a little lighter and a little bluer. And any side panel of the boat is gonna be catching that warm ambient light from the sun that is low on the horizon. So if I take this little color value formula that I've created for the boats and just made a simple cube, this is what it would look like. And since I have that in my head, 
I know that I can use it to construct a boat completely from my imagination if I want. It's a lot better to understand the structure of something and what's happening and kind of be able to make it up if you need to than trying to paint the photo exactly the way you see it because a lot of the information is just not gonna be there. And you're gonna be looking for things that just aren't there. And you're not gonna be given the information that you need to construct that part of the painting. I know this might be a little confusing, so let's jump to the demonstration part of the video and explain this further. So the first thing I do is I tone my canvas, so I'm starting on a neutral value. And then I go through the painting, blocking all the big shapes out with flat color. I'm mainly focused on getting the value relationships right. They don't have to be 100% perfect right now, and this is thin paint because I know I'm going to be building more paint on top of this. It's very important that you build all these big value shapes up together. You don't want one area to get too far along because you always need to be comparing all the shapes to each other. All right, now I can start building these boats with that little color value structure formula that I figured out. But I'm also adding into that formula the idea of atmospheric perspective, which is as things get further away, they get cooler, they also have less detail. So you'll see me put in a lot less detail in the boats further away. I'll also try and soften a lot of edges as the boats get further away. You know, as things come forward, they get more clear and they get more crisp. But I don't take this all the way to completion right here. I move on to other sections of the painting. And as I'm painting, I'm not really using the photo that much. I'm letting my knowledge of the painting fundamentals guide my decision making. I know I want this house to be the focal point, so I decide to push it a little brighter. I push the warmth in the trees to contrast the cools in the boats. I push the detail in the boats up front to bring them forward more and to add depth to the whole row of boats. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you can take this information and implement it on the next time you paint a landscape from a photo. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that little notification bell so you get notified whenever I release a new video. If you have any questions, leave those questions in the comment section. And if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.